Hi, this is Billy Bean here with a world news update. Today's date is December 26, 2023 in Texas. It's about noon. Episode 103, some of the things I'll cover. Space Pulse hits playing. U.S. military green on green inside the Mediterranean Sea. Iran cybers Israel. And Russia gives surrender terms to the U.S. for Ukraine. Some of my sources are God in the Bible, Patriot, Subscriber, Forbes, Newsweek, Kyle Turner, Military News, Jacob Dreesen, Israeli News Live, Real Raw News. So let's get started. Okay, there was a report out of uh, uh, the, that actually happened over the Atlantic Ocean near the new U.S. for a plane problem. So we've got Florida, we've got South America, Venezuela, We've got Bermuda, Barbados, and the Ukraine, uh, UK would be over in this area. Now, I put this together. Um, this is based on my knowledge of what's going on. We have a space event coming in, Planet X, the galactic sheet, uh, the binary sun. We have something going on in space. And I had these reports from two of my Patriot subscribers. Uh, one happened on, uh, I just received the report, but this incident happened on December 17. And that was about the time we had the X 2.8 X flare from the sun and some CMEs coming in. And uh, I've given out that information before and another good source is suspicious observers with regard to the sun having impact and what's happening in space impacting the earth and impacting human health so this came out december 17 the only thing i don't have and i'm i'm requesting from my patriot sus subscriber is your geographic location what state are you in in the u.s but uh, she says i and many others uh, about 7 p.m. on December 17, had to go to the local ER for seizures. And that correlates with that space event we were having. Also, another Patriot subscriber on December 16, and I just received this one also uh, about December 24. But on December 16, uh, I went to the grocery store and I was feeling lightheaded and I got my groceries and made it home and I could barely stand up. And when I went in, I had to throw up. I submit to you that these are both on the ground reports of health effects on two individuals inside the U.S., December 16 and December 17, I believe, are correlated to what's going on in space. Now, we had uh, over the weekend, we had a plane that was the Maloth number 175. It's a Airbus 300. And it took off from Barbados. Uh, on December 24, it was supposed to arrive in the UK about 6 a.m. on December 24. So this would have been about, you know, late at night, early in the morning, 1 to 2 a.m. But they were hit at 38,000 feet and clear sky. And they were hit by some kind of unknown turbulence. And they had to divert to Bermuda, where 11 people had to go to the hospital. 
And now uh, their arrival at, in the UK is going to be on December 27. Now we had a similar event occur inside the U.S. Oh, a few months ago. We had several planes, uh, I think that well, was like Tennessee, and we had one up in Maine and another one maybe down in New York, all of which were hit with this unknown, unexpected, strong turbulence. We had one person who died in this area. It was a small plane, like two to three people. This one in Tennessee was a commercial plane and had to divert and take many people to the hospital who had severe injuries. I submit that this event that just took place uh, going from Barbados, especially to the UK, but diverted to Bermuda, uh, correlates with the information from Mike from around the world with regard to uh, uh, energy a pulse from space coming in, and he one of the dates he gave was December 24, 25, 26. So I submit as a possibility what hit this plane was a pulse of energy from space. So uh, Mike had given some other dates early in January to expect uh, these kind of events going on. So, it's just a heads up. If we know the dates, we can uh, maybe better uh, take care of our schedule and not schedule to do a lot of extreme uh, activities. So, yeah, that's going on. Now, also, so we've got the U.S., South America, something's going on in Venezuela. We recently heard about that potential dust up between Venezuela and Guyana. Venezuela's government voted in their government to annex, take over part of Guyana's uh, land grab. Uh, it was a land grab to take their resources. So the U.S., military came in and said they would support Guyana. Now, a few days after that, I reported that Maduro, he's the leader of Venezuela, and Guyana were negotiating, and they're stepping back from military force, but they still hadn't settled the land dispute. Now, the U.S. is getting involved and has taken down some of the sanctions on Venezuela. So that's going down by the U.S. State Department. They also arranged for Venezuela to release 10 Americans allegedly illegally arrested, plus they're extraditing an individual wanted by the U.S. government, Leonard Francis. He had been charged with bribery. Um, I don't know the details of the case yet, but I'm just bringing you up to date on what's going on in Venezuela, Guyana, and the U.S. So that's going on. Now let's look at... Uh, What's going on? Yeah. So we've got Israel. We've got Gaza. And oh, by the way, uh, Israeli real estate companies are now uh, putting out ads and taking bidders for oceanfront property along the Gaza coastline that'll be ready with hotels and other things by 2030. Now, Israel seems intent on, and I had a Patriot subscriber, Hal Turner came out with this information on, over the weekend, but I had a Patriot subscriber who gave uh, this similar information a few days ago. So that's going on. Now we've got Lebanon, Syria, We've got Jordan, 
Iraq, Iran, India would be over here. Because over the weekend we had an, a direct strike from Iran to a ship that was um, out in the this Indian Ocean. Uh, supposedly affiliated with Israel. But Iran made a direct strike on a commercial ship uh, a few days ago that was about 200 miles uh, west of India. So that's going on. Now, I have sources who are talking about, so we've got the West Bank. So Palestine consist of two areas, Gaza and the West Bank. And it has a president, Mahmoud Abbas. Now currently, uh, just uh, yeah, within the last 24 hours, Saudi Arabia and the UAE said to Abbas, resign or no more money from us and Saudi Arabia and the UAE said, we'll pick a new president of Palestine. So it's unknown to me exactly what are uh, the government ties between Palestine, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. But that's being reported. Now we have this. Also, another source is saying that the West Bank is going to go to Jordan. We have Egypt over here. We've got uh, the Sinai Desert. Right here would be the Suez Canal. Now currently with all these uh, commercial ships being held up uh, in the area of Yemen. So we've got down here Saudi Arabia. We've got the Red Sea, Yemen, Oman. And Yemen, we understand the Houthis are a proxy for Iran. So we've got things going on. So now, a lot of commercial ships are being held up in this area, which means that Egypt loses approximately nine billion dollars per year because they charge i think half a million dollars for each ship to go through the suez canal well if all these ships are being held down here they're losing money so it's thought that the u.s and the U.S. no longer can go through Congress to get direct money for war, either in Israel or Ukraine, because the American people are fed up. And this is an elect presidential election year, 2024. So what the shadow U.S. government is doing is they're still sending money to Israel and other nations and Ukra uh, Ukraine. But they're doing a drawdown of the budgets of different departments, the Forestry Department, Agriculture, CDC, and so on. They're manipulating where the money is supposed to be. So at any rate, it's believed that the U.S. is going to offer money to Israel to allow the Palestinians to cross the Rafa crossing and come into the Sinai. Likewise, it's believed the U.S. will give money to Jordan to allow Jordan to take the Palestinian refugees from the West Bank. So that's going on. Hey, the Israel wants all this land, this land, and now they're going into Lebanon because they also want part of this land. So, and while we're at it, why not take some of Syria? I don't see that happening. Now, Jerusalem Post is reporting December 23 that Khomeini, uh, the leader of Iran, who, by the way, was um, 
put in place by the U.S. shadow government some decades ago is threatening an economic boycott against Israel. Now, just yesterday, um, Israel killed, uh, they bombed near Damascus, and they took out a brigadier general of Iran, and then Iran, that was about 11 o'clock yesterday, then Iran responded on Israel by 4 p.m. with a cyber attack. And now much of the infrastructure inside Israel, we believe, is still reported as being down, uh, like power, internet, and so on. So that's going on. Now, this Khomeini, uh, who's talking about an economic boycott, and already there are reports inside Israel of shortages of food, fuel, and so on, because the ships are not being allowed to traverse the Red Sea to get to Israel. And Iran is also threatening to, so this is Egypt, we would have Africa, Egypt, there's the Strait of Gibraltar, Iran is threatening to close off the Strait of Gibraltar and also not allow shipments to get to Israel via the Mediterranean Sea. So that's going on. Yeah, Jerusalem Post. And now we have this. Yeah, the, uh, an Iranian drone hit out in the Indian Ocean a British ship, the MV Chem Pluto. And I believe it was carrying oil carry crude oil from Saudi Arabia. It does have an Israeli owner interest in the vehicle. Yeah. So that's the one that Iran attacked. And now we have this. Okay. So early in the, we know that the alleged Hamas attack took place about uh, October 8, and now there are many sources uh, that would be, uh, uh, we have a source, uh, uh, a Stephen Gardner interview of a former CIA uh, operative, Who's to, and also Scott Ritter, a retired Marine military analyst, both of whom are saying that uh, supposedly on the Hamas attack October 8, 1,200 Israelis were killed. It's now believed 80 to 90 percent were actually killed by the IDF. And what's being reported is Hamas came in and they did take out 72 members of the Israeli uh, Special Forces group. Uh, that happened. So we know the attack was about 4 a.m. So Hamas took out this many and they also kidnapped two to three hundred people. So now it's believed that the Israeli Defense Force killed most of the Israeli people. And then we have those recent reports of Israeli Defense Force shooting dead three Israeli hostages who had managed to escape. And also a sniper attack on an 80-year-old woman and her 60-year-old daughter who were going into a Catholic church for mass. The sniper shot them both in the back. Uh, no military objective there. So that's going on. Israel is not winning the PR war at all. Yeah, so that's going on. But Real Raw News is also reporting on this incident that happened 
in the uh, Mediterranean Sea. I'll give you details. So in the Mediterranean Sea on November 10, we had U.S. Special Forces uh, somewhere, here's Israel, right about here, and they were in a helicopter, and Lebanon, and they crashed, and that was about uh, midnight, and it was being reported by Lebanon that it was a s explosion. Now, the cover story the U.S. military put out is, oh, this helicopter was special forces, was refueling, it was a training exercise, really? In the middle of a hot shooting combat area? Uh, American citizens who have several neurons firing in their brain didn't buy that. Now it comes out that the pilot and co-pilot, and there were five special forces killed, the pilot and co-pilot had also been associated with the White Hat Gen Marine General Eric Smith. And we know that during this deployment, I put out in previous videos that Marine General Smith had been hit by some type of uh, heart attack device. He had to go in the hospital, and, and then he recovered after about two weeks. Well... Praise the Lord, he's back in the saddle. So at any rate, uh, the White Hats managed to infiltrate the Black Hats who took the, uh, dredged up the remains of the helicopter and the five bodies, took them back to Dover in the U.S., cremated the bodies and the uh, General Smith's uh, secret uh, Infiltrators were able to uh, get to the debris remains of the helicopter, take samples. And what's coming out is it was Semtex that was planted inside the helicopter and then detonated. So we have an example in the Mediterranean Sea near Israel, November 10, of the Black Hat operation who have infiltrated the U.S. military, a green-on-green green attack. And the pilot and co-pilot were part of 160th Special Operations Group. So, that's going on. Yeah. All right. And now we have this. So, yeah. So down here around the uh, Yemen and the Red Sea. So we've got this going on, <clears throat> going on, this is Africa. Okay, we've got different ships in this area. We've got China, a warship that's near Djibouti. We have a ship from India whose location of warship is unknown. We have uh, also commercial vehicles in this area. Now, supposedly the U.S. was going to head up a task force 153, with the U.S. Navy leading about 15 nations to provide escort services for commercial vehicles through the Red Sea. But the other nations, it sounds like, didn't trust the U.S. Navy or the U.S. military or the shadow U.S. government. And we certainly know we American citizen patriots, we have a shadow uh, supposedly U.S. government uh, putting out this and that. But it's shadow. We know that. So now... France is sending their military ships to escort French flag ships. Spain is sending their military to escort Spain flag ships. 
and it appears that other nations are following suit. Now we do have a report uh, for within the last 24 hours that the U.S. Navy is providing military escort for some carriers, but we don't have information on the carriers. Now, we have this. Russia uh, is going to send, so we've got Egypt, the Suez Canal, and by the way, Russian ships are free to go through the Red Sea because we know Russia has a working relationship with Iran and thus with the Houthis. So Russian ships have no problem traveling through the Red Sea. This is coming out that Russia is going to send a sub in this area. So that'll be a Russian sub the UFA to guard the Suez Canal. So that ought to be interesting. And we have this off of the Somali coast. That would be part of Africa. We have a Republic of Korea. That would be South Korea destroyer, the Yang Man. From Japan, we have a Navy destroyer, the Akabono, that's currently training. We have the USS Eisenhower in this area. We have the Japan destroyer is training with the Eisenhower. Yeah. To provide security for the Gulf of Aden in this area. Okay, now we have this from The Hill. Iran threatens to close the Mediterranean Sea uh, for crimes in Gaza and also to close the Strait of Gibraltar. New York Prepper is reporting the Houthis fired... Yeah, that would be December 23, so the Hooties fired on the USS Laboon. We have several, we have five Arleigh-class ships. Laboon is one of them in this area, also including the Kearney and the Mason. So we see a hot <laughs> combat area. And now we have this. So we have Lebanon way up here. We've got Turkey. So now what is Turkey doing? Let's get rid of some of this stuff on the board here. Turkey, we understand, now has troops on the ground. So right here in Gaza. Turkey has boots on the ground. In Gaza and also in Syria and also in Iraq right here. So we've got Turkey, boots on the ground, Turkey, boots on the ground and also in Gaza. That happened in the last day or so. Now, Turkey uh, took out 12 soldiers. Uh, no, the Iraqi resistance, also a proxy for Iran, killed 12 Turkey soldiers inside Iraq who were members of the PKK. Now, decades ago, the PKK, a terrorist group, went inside Turkey to assassinate and overthrow the government of Erdogan, who is still the president of Turkey. So that's going on. So then Turkey attacked the Iraqi resistance and took out um, several groups in response to 
soldiers of Turkey being killed. And now we have this from Hal Turner. December 26th today, the U.S. Navy is escorting merchant vessels, it's commercial, through the Red Sea. So that's going on. And now we have this. Yeah, Israel is selling oceanfront property. And, um, yeah, I got that. And now we have this, yeah. Uh, Israel took out Brigadier General, Iranian Brigadier General Reza Mousavi. That was yesterday. And then Iran responded by taking down Israeli uh, power and internet. Yeah. So we've got this going on. Now, we'll look at what's happening inside uh, Ukraine. Another hot spot. Uh, the deep state wants to get juiced up to World War Three. So, we've got Russia, Ukraine, Donetsk, Lohansk, uh, Zaporizhzhia, Kherson, Odessa, and the, uh, there was a meeting a few days ago in Washington, D.C. Now, we know J.B. is an actor wearing a mask, but supposedly Lavrov uh, from Russia met with JB's handlers, the deep state. And what Russia wanted was complete surrender by Ukraine. And Russia was going to take everything from Kharkiv to Odessa, control the uh, Black Sea. And this part, Russia said, could go to Poland. Uh, I believe this part historically had been part of Poland. And now today, Israeli News Live, Stephen Menon is reporting Russia has taken all of Donetsk and Marinka. And uh, I said I uh, had confirmed my number along the front line was 250,000 Russian soldiers. So that's still going on. Now, uh, so Israeli News Live, Stephen Benoon is reporting today that Russia is continuing to move in and take over Ukraine. So a short prayer. I'll give the modified prayer of General Patton, World War II. Father, grant us fair weather for battle. Guide us from victory to victory and crush our enemies. And we say, thank you, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and many call Yeshua, and God the Holy Spirit. I say to my family and friends, remain steady out there, continue to pray. God is in charge, and he is on the move. I love you, and I'll see you soon.